got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire, came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the sand. And right now, I feel like a hundred grand. You are listening to Inspired Insider with your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise. Dr. Jeremy Weiss here. We're here live at the Prosper Show. We're here with Ron and Jason, WebsiteClosers.com. And I want to start off with why you started Website Closers. Ron, we'll start with you. Okay. Uh, the reason we started this company is because there was there's kind of a lack in our sector of competence, I guess I would say. There aren't a lot of companies that understand what happens behind the scenes of an internet company. Um, between myself and Jason, we understand pretty much everything between the internet sector and brokering. So that's so, what Jason, what do you guys do? Yeah, so uh, you know, I also own a company called United Commerce Group, so I own e-commerce companies, I run them as well. So Ron and I decided You're to also get, a client, right? I'm also a client. <laughs> and so I'm also a buyer. <laughs> and uh, so Ron and I decided to get together uh, to help you know sellers like Amazon sellers um, do a better job of exiting at their highest possible valuation. Yeah. And so we work we work very hard to make sure we maximize valuation for clients. This is very important. And so what are some of the big mistakes you see people making? Because probably when they come to you there's some tweaks they need to make to get a higher valuation. So what should people start doing now so when they come to you, you can get the maximum price for them? I, w I would say, you know, first and foremost, it's best that they come to us as soon as possible. Um, a couple things. One, Even before they're thinking of selling. Way before, yeah. yeah. You, you want to come to us, you know, six, seven, eight months before so that we can help prepare them from a tax return standpoint, from a financial standpoint, making sure the balance sheet is clean and needs, needs to be in a position to, to make the most success at closing. Yeah. So. so I want to hear some great customer success stories. What are, I'll, I'll get one from you, your favorite, and then Jason, I'll get one from you too. We took a company that came to us that was, I'd say five months old. Okay, the first three months they really made nothing. Um, he wanted to sell, the number seemed awfully high, but he had a great December. He came to me in early they January. They were only five months old. Yes. I like where the story's going, all right? <laughs> he, he, he wanted a big number. I said, you know, I love your company. I think we can definitely sell you. I don't know about the evaluation you're putting on it, but um, let's let it go a little longer and we'll see if we can get a number. He comes back to me a month later and says, I did an even bigger January. Now he has my attention. Within a month, we went to market. We closed in less than one year old. We got in the seven figures of that company wow. on a, a company that was less than a year old. Yeah. Hadn't even hit its first year. Wow. So what are some, I want to get to your favorite one, but what are some common reasons why people want to sell? Well, you know, I think from the perspective of an Amazon seller anyway, a lot of them hear that it's best at the two-year mark uh, to start considering selling. Uh, but another reason is that a lot of these guys, you know, they like the creative aspect of things. They they like building they're companies. They're ADD entrepreneurs. They're ADD entrepreneurs. Gotcha. But they, they don't, they don't want to have so employees. So if you're an ADD entrepreneur, they need to call you. That's exactly <laughs> right. Absolutely. Yeah. So one of your, Jason, one of your favorite success stories. You know, we have so many, but, you know, one that comes to mind is, you know, we had an Amazon seller that was out of Australia. And, uh, you know, he was smart enough where he, in Australia, had started up a U.S. entity and ran all of his tax returns through the U.S. entity. And we were able to sell his company to a private individual for a high multiple. And uh, I would consider that success because it's very difficult to sell international sellers. And uh, we've gotten a lot better at it now over the last few years. So that was So a what's a, a range of multiples people? I'm sure they range with industry, but it's in, I guess in e-commerce, what's some of the range people should be thinking of? Uh, as far as that goes? Well, the average in the mar in the marketplace right now is about 2.3, mm -hmm. um, but we are able to achieve three to five times. Wow. Um, and we average about 4.2 to 4.3 times uh, earnings, not EBITDA, but earnings. And so we have a calculation and evaluation model that we go through to help them get to their discretionary earnings number. Yeah. So it's a multiple of that. So as far as, you know, some of the companies probably have maybe automatic, um, you know, fulfillment, um, continuing customers on, on that plan, does that increase, how does that affect as far as the, the multiples go? Ask that one more time. You know, like if it's, let's say, um, like a health, 
e-commerce where people are already subscribed. They have a subscription oh, I see. portion. I see what you're saying. So how, what's the easiest way to transfer yeah. an Amazon Seller Central account in that kind of process? Yeah, yeah well, you know, generally there, there are some um, secret sauce ways that we do that. Yeah. Um, it really depends on whether or not it's an asset sale or it's a stock sale. Um, but we work with them hand in hand to make sure that the transition works properly. So they don't lose any traction as it relates to lightning deals, uh, the subscribe and save process. Yeah. I mean, they don't lose anything. Through, through I'm sure that's like objections people are thinking of in their mind. What are some of the objections that people have when they're worried about selling their business that maybe from your standpoint, you're like, ah, oh, that's, that's no problem whatsoever? I think there's two things. I mean, one is, you know, trying to ensure that we meet the expectations of the seller. That's got to be the hardest thing, you know, because sellers, um, for whatever reason, think that their company might be worth 10 to 20 times multiple. And it's their baby. It's they their think baby. it's worth like... And I get it because I have some babies too, you know, but uh, the reality is what the market will actually bear. And so that's one of the things that we've struggled with. And we work with clients and sometimes it takes a couple of years to get them where they need to be. Uh, but I would say for me, that's probably the hardest. Okay. Ron, so I'll start with you and Jason, um, a milestone you're especially proud of, of what you've accomplished in the business so far. I think if you really look at what we did in a few short years, actually three really, um, we have grown to a level of, I believe, around 50,000 buyers and close wow. to 300 companies that That's we amazing. represent. It's hard to do a double-sided marketplace like that, right? I mean, where you have customers, but you also have to find the buyers, too. It's a great scenario. It's a perfect storm, yeah. is what it is. Yep. Milestone for you that you're, you're proud of with the company? Well, it, for me, it's the overall company because, again, I run e-commerce companies, too. And I, I left the practice of law about... Uh, oh, you're a recovering lawyer. Yeah. All right, cool. Lawyer. I did that for uh, about 13 years, and I decided to go out on my own and, and do United Commerce Group. And this brokerage has been very successful, both Valley Bigs and website closers. And yeah. very, very proud of you know what we've A lot achieved. of the recovering lawyers I meet are very successful entrepreneurs. I don't know it, what it is. best just to get out of the law and start doing things that are a lot more fun. Let's cool. just put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> so, thing, where should we point people to? words uh, online. For us, yeah, for you I would definitely just go to websiteclosers.com, you know, watch some of our videos. We do a lot of blogging, so we help people you know, sort of understand the marketplace best. But then also just get on the phone with us and let's have a conversation. Is there a most valuable blog or content piece that people should check out first on Website Closers? I think our videos, yeah. The videos really go through you know, everything from valuation to you know, when to sell, you know, um, you know, what we're looking for from a valuation standpoint. So. Okay. Yeah. I always like to end on a personal note of a bucket list item, something you want to do or see in your lifetime. Ron, let's start with you. I think I've done so much and traveled so much and been so many places and lived a pretty eclectic life. Um, probably the next step would be Mars. Mars. All right. I love that. Okay. I don't think I can top with that. that. No. I don't. I don't think I can compete with that. I don't know. <laughs> bucket. Anywhere you want to go. Anything you want to see for you or your family. Yeah, you know, I do a lot of business in India um, with a lot of a lot of folks. So I think that's probably one of the next things I want to do is go to India and go spend India. some time there. And yeah, have it been so very cool. Yeah. Live from the Prosper Show. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. Thank you.